Welcome to the James and Heather Show. I'm Heather Dawn, and this is well, look James. at this butt but, here. Yeah. Ooh, David, oh, look at this. Eye. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I literally cannot stop it's so watching round. this. It right? is sexy. I am Ooh. definitely addicted to porn, guys. I don't know. What? Oh, <laughs> hi. Hi, I'm yes. James Gay. This is James Gay. That's what I was trying to say, but we were so distracted by this great piece of pornography. Which is the topic of today. Porn and panic. <laughs> ah. And then we have we this have special one. special guest here, David Lay. <laughs> talking Dr. about David porn. Lay. Yes, talking about porn. A, a new book out, yes. Um, yeah, Ethical Porn for Dicks. Ethical Porn for Dicks. <laughs> and the subtitle is? Uh, Man's Guide to Responsible Viewing Pleasure. I'm Great. Like but women can buy it for all the dicks in their life who watch porn. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, your famous book that everybody knows you for is The Myth of Sex Addiction, mm -hmm. if I remember, which is a, a good book and a great topic, and it is a myth. It's amazing. It's an incredible book and looks at all the different sort of myths that go into sex addiction. Thank you. But so, speaking about porn, yes, <laughs> let's talk about porn. <laughs> What's the panic? What's your deal with porn? Why do you know so much? Who are you? Where are you from? That's do you have your social security on you? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you're getting my fingerprints, right? <laughs> blood sample. Pretty Definitely much. blood sample. <laughs> Um, I'm a psychologist. I'm based in Albuquerque. I run a large Baver Health agency out there. Um, I'm a little different from a lot of folks uh, working and writing in sexuality mm. because I specialize actually in working in general mental health. My agency treats uh, folks with long-term you know, chronic mental illness, mm. serious substance use issues, etc. Yeah. One of the things that I've noticed over my career is that most folks in mental health have very little training or experience with sexuality. Absolutely. I can <laughs> attest to that. And as, <laughs> and as a result, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as a result, people you know, go for therapy uh -huh. and the therapist isn't ready to talk about sex. Right. And, uh, and then if the, if the person brings it up, most therapists are reacting from a place of fear. Now, the mm. thing about mm. porn is that our society right now is in a tremendous porn panic. Yeah. Um, everybody is just convinced that porn is doing awful things. Mm. Porn is breaking people's penises. Mm. Porn is, you know, <laughs> causing rape. Porn is destroying... Break? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Really? Well, yeah. that is the claim. I thought you is can that, sprain one, right? Like, you can't actually break a penis. Well, it, 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 really, you actually can. You can really? break the corpus callosum and, and yeah, cause, yeah. you know, cause but that's some damage. Sorry to yeah. segue. I was just thinking. <laughs> but, right, but, but there are guys out Back there. Back to rape. There are what? guys out there who are afraid that yeah. um, watching too much porn has caused erectile dysfunction, uh, right. and uh, they start blaming porn when they get mm. in bed with a woman, or it's, it's almost always a woman. And this mm. is a very heteronormative kind of conversation, mm. and. Uh, they feel like that is caused by porn. Uh, as opposed to understanding what's going on within them, as mm. opposed to you know discussing and exploring the issues of anxiety and the way in which having sex with somebody is a very different experience than masturbating. Sure, sure. Um, but we're not ready to have that conversation because instead yeah. we would much rather say porn. Right, right, right. right so right, let's right. like have a, a particular diagnosis. Let's have a particular object that we can, mm -hmm. you know, blame for the cause of all these other relational right, issues right. and lack of communication and other things going yeah, on. Yeah, it's right? about externalizing instead yeah. of and, and being accountable. Right. The original title for my book was um, A Gentleman's Guide to Responsible Porn Use. And I really mm. like that, um, just sort of exploring the idea of can you be a gentleman? Can yeah. you be a responsible man of honor yeah. and still watch pornography? Right. I think you can if you have thought about what role pornography plays in your life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of people are using pornography these days in a very kind of thoughtless, mm. uh, mindless kind of way. Mm. My job, I think, is to invite people to, to stop, take a moment, mm. and think, what does pornography mean to me? How mm. do I want to use it, and how right. don't I want to use it? Okay. So, well, you know, it, it, when it relates to, like, all the the research and the neuroscience that the people, you know, who are claiming that porn can be addictive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's your response to all those claims? <sighs> Typically, in most of that research, mm -hmm. um, extreme pornography use is classified as around an hour a day. Mm. Now, that's a lot of porn. It is. <laughs> is it broken it, it up or just like in one section? Except that, now wait a minute, because uh -huh. in 2014, it was identified that the average United States American watches five hours of television a day. Right. One right. hour of porn versus five hours of television. So, 
<laughs> doesn't yeah. seem that yeah. much nah. in comparison. <laughs> right, and really what we're talking about then when we're talking about pornography is we're talking about masturbation. Uh -huh. Now, in the 1800s, people, you know, banned uh, masturbation because there was the idea that it turned people into immoral, mm. raging, mindless, crazy people. Uh. You know, Kellogg's cornflakes and graham crackers were invented. Oh, we've talked about those. Yeah. Oh. We've Except talked about that. those. Yes. <laughs> were invented to prevent <laughs> masturbation. Right. Bland foods, right. thinking that that would actually <laughs> However, I, your... it, it is very clear they didn't anticipate s'mores. Uh. Yeah. S'mores are wicked <laughs> sexy. Hello, chocolate. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Aphrodisiac, right? I have a question because you mentioned something you said where porn is really talking about masturbation but mm -hmm. there's so many different categories now of porn um that i you know i always wonder um if like if if when and when these whomever or these people have done studies on pornography mm -hmm. and the watch of porn use does it matter what type of porn like what if you're watching like snm porn mm -hmm. or you know anal or you know uh gang bangs, gang bangs. Mm -hmm. yeah or you know people who like to be choked or yeah. people who like to be or defecated watching, on or watching gay porn if you're a straight person or uh -huh. watching straight porn if you're a gay person what does right. that mean what's the difference yeah. we don't know the sad thing is that most research about pornography is crap. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's really sad. You know, yeah. they, they did a study in Britain where they looked at 40,000 research articles about pornography. Mm. They, they identified that less than 1% uh. were scientifically useful oh, because okay. it is overwhelmingly driven by people's bias, by uh, people's fear right. on both sides. Some people sure. think porn is great. Some people think porn is evil and uh, awful. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, the scientific reality and the reality that most of us live in is yeah. somewhere in the middle. Huh. We think, you know, are there kinds of pornography that can be unhealthy? Mm. Probably. Yeah. But more it depends on are you a healthy or unhealthy person? Uh, if you're an unhealthy person, the mind uh -huh. of the you're person. usually going to be using unhealthy porn in an unhealthy way. Uh -huh. We don't fix that by dealing with the porn. We fix uh -huh. it by dealing with the person. Well, so what would be unhealthy porn? What would be unhealthy behavior, would you say? If you subscribe to that viewpoint. Right, because you're saying that none of it's necessarily unhealthy. You're saying the person's mind mm -hmm. is unhealthy, but not mm -hmm. the porn per se that they're watching. There's a small group of men who mm -hmm. are predisposed to sexual violence mm -hmm. by virtue of abusing um, drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. having misogynistic attitudes, being mm -hmm. impulsive, mm -hmm. growing up in poverty, and having mental health issues. Uh, uh -huh. When those men consume violent pornography, it increases the chances that they'll act sexually violently. Uh, uh -huh. But the It's a very small minority, though. It is, right? and we can't really affect their risk of sexual violence by mm -hmm. uh, taking away the porn. Uh, we can more okay. effectively address their risk of sexual violence by dealing with the drugs and alcohol, by uh, dealing with the misogyny, yeah. by dealing with the empathy, by right. in increasing yeah. people's empathy. Well, and we can't fix that by porn. That's, that's one of those things where if, if, you're, if the treatment approach is to look at the sex or the porn use, then oftentimes people miss these underlying mm -hmm. things that, so the treatment modality yeah. becomes right. something that gets in the way of actually helping these men yeah. be less violent, yeah. right? The other thing too that I was reading that was pretty fascinating to me, especially because it came from a doctor, like a mm. PhD, and I think people see those letters and sit there and go, this person must really know what they're talking about because they have yeah. PH and D after their name mm -hmm. or M and D after their name. Yeah, you know, yeah. I should give this validity. Right. And this man was uh, a psychologist in psychology today, and I was talking to you a little bit about this before the show, mm -hmm. and he was sitting there comparing um, how um, the, the effects of porn are just like smoking cigarettes. And he was saying back in the 70s when people had throat irritations, mm -hmm. he wrote this in the article, I don't know if you read it, I can't remember the doctor's name, but he's like, we would prescribe more cigarettes. And look, we had no mm -hmm. idea what cigarettes were going to be doing people. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think porn is causing cancer. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, and, and, I didn't even see how right. he put those two together. And I was like, right. he actually put those two together. And I thought, who's reading this and yeah. not thinking crap? Well, that's yeah. the modern narrative right now. And, and yeah, I, I've been studying this now for several years. Mm -hmm. and, and there is a lot of rhetoric and a lot of um, hyperbole that is used to manipulate people mm, mm. to make them afraid. Uh -huh. And that argument is one that has surfaced just in the past six months or year, yeah. is that porn is just like tobacco was back in the day. But mm. as I like to point out, kind of mm. like you said, you know, six million people died worldwide last year from the effects of tobacco. Right. How many people died from Much the effects of porn? porn? Right. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know that, yeah, that, that guy masturbating. Just like that, right? right. 
that guy masturbating watching porn while he's standing on a roof and uh-huh. he gets excited and falls off the roof. Are you going to blame <laughs> porn for right, that? Pretty much. Oh my God, I'm going to have my last orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. But yeah. this is, it, it is a, it is a uh, tactic to make people mm, afraid of porn. Right. Now, one of the things I talk about here a lot is the old <laughs> story. Like a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Well, you know the old story, Chicken Little? Yeah. Now, one of the things I love about that story is that it is over 2,000 years old. Mm. It's really a powerful Amazing. story. You know, Chicken yeah. chicken Little, the sky is falling, runs around, gets everybody, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. Yeah. Now, the rest of the story is Foxy Loxy says, come on in my cave, I'll take mm. care of you, mm. and then eats them. Oh. The moral of the story is that there are people out there who will tell you to be afraid of something uh, that you may not really need to be afraid of. And right. if they're telling you to be afraid in an ambiguous kind of circumstance, yeah. be careful and don't trust them because they may be using it to take advantage of you. Now, yeah. one of the ways this happens is that consistently, both in Utah and in uh, the United Kingdom right now, there are arguments for significant laws to restrict pornography but Mm. it just so happens Mm -hmm. that throughout history every time these laws have been put in place there are two groups that suffer women and LGBT that these laws are almost always put in place by conservative Uh very reactionary Mm. kind of groups Mm. who don't really like female freedom and Mm. don't really like sexual diversity Uh and they use these laws and this fear about pornography as a way to restrict and suppress sexual diversity and sexual freedom because their idea of healthy sexuality is very different than yours and mine. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Interesting. That is interesting. One of the things that I read too was that most people who self-identify as having a porn addiction Mm -hmm. are those that are have a religious strong religious Mm -hmm. belief as well right so the two kind of go hand in hand so one of the you know i started by bashing the research on porn Uh, well just over the past four or five years there's been a lot of really remarkable now research about Mm -hmm. pornography Mm -hmm. really looking at what are the effects Mm -hmm. and who is it that's having these problems consistently people who identify as porn addicts or Mm -hmm. people who report that they are struggling to control their porn use Mm -hmm. are people who come from a more moral or religious background Mm -hmm. even though they are using less porn than anybody else Mm -hmm. most atheists report no problem with porn interesting interesting. interesting. but if you grow up believing that your sexuality is something to be afraid of and to uh, control, yeah. then any kind of sexual desires that you have that don't fit in the box that you were told is okay right. are all of a sudden all of a sudden something to be afraid of and some, yeah. something to suppress. So right. now there's research showing that the idea of porn addiction and the struggle with porn is mm-hmm. more connected to religion, religious values, religious mm-hmm. fear of sex. Mm-hmm. We can help those people, but not by attacking porn, but mm-hmm. by helping them to realize that they need to live in a world now where porn is accessible, where mm-hmm. porn is available, mm-hmm. and they need to figure out how to resolve those Conflicts, you know, mm. a lot of therapists have worked for a long time with folks who, you know, came from religious backgrounds and realized that they were gay mm. and had to resolve that conflict, had to wrestle with, well, I'm gay, do I accept myself, and what do I do with these religious values that I grew up with? Uh, we can help people with that. We've done a right. good job at that. Now we need to figure out how to help people resolve that conflict yeah. in the modern world of sexuality. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Mm-hmm. Porn is just a scapegoat. Yeah. Porn is a symbol. Porn is the tip of the iceberg, just like just like the bathroom bill in mm-hmm. North Carolina. It's not really about transgender people. Mm-hmm. It, it is about the general fear that we have that sexuality and mm-hmm. orientation and gender are not simple Uh, and they're changing and mm. we can't keep up people are afraid of that right what was the motivation for you to write your second book so your first book was the myth Mm -hmm. of sex addiction and now you're sort of tackling the myth of porn of pornography being bad for you Mm -hmm. Uh, was all this stuff that you're talking about was this your motivation did you have something in specific um well mm -hmm. I my first book actually is called insatiable wives oh, okay. um, and it's about female sexuality um and i wrote that book because i was clinically depressed i was banging my head against the wall with managed care and state government mm. trying to deal with health care issues yeah. and um and i needed an outlet mm. that book um, writing that book offered me this really fascinating outlet where i got mm. to talk to people about mm. kinky wild female driven sex uh-huh. and my depression went away <laughs> you know, that, that, that's the cure yeah, for depression be creative. Yeah, yeah. Be, be creative with your sexuality. Yes, be creative. Yeah. And 
Um, but the interesting thing was, people didn't really want, want to talk about that book. People uh, didn't really want to talk about female sexuality. Uh, yeah. They focused on this one little topic in there where I had said there was this one guy who blew through a bunch of marriages, and I said it'd be really easy to diagnose him as a sex addict, but I don't believe in sex addiction. Mm. And everybody was like, wait, you don't? Really? Because uh, uh, everybody else does. And I yeah. said, really? Yeah. And so I spent a year and a half kind of reading everything I could about sex addiction and I started yeah. kind of going well maybe I'm wrong maybe mm. maybe, maybe an addiction model is an okay you, thing here mm. I ended up at the end of it arguing that not only is it not okay but it's dangerous because mm. it is a way to impose morality mm. and impose sexual values mm -hmm. but to use mental health and, and, mm. and medical arguments to enforce mm. the right way of being sexual. Right, which is usually, you know, based on the therapist's own sort of That's sexual right. practices. That's right. And, right, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anybody is a sex addict if they have more sex than the therapist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all too often true. Yeah. 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 It is, unfortunately. And, and I mean, again, where we started was so many therapists have little training in sexuality. So yeah. they're basing their judgment about uh -huh. what is healthy sexuality on their own experience and what mm. they saw in the general media. Well, the general right. media uses fear of sex to uh -huh. sell shit. Right, right. <laughs> what, um, what would you say would be like a few pros or cons of using porn in a relationship? And then also as a secondary portion to that question, what do you think about, and I know that you have a, a daughter, what do you think about uh, porn uh, as it being an educational tool for children because they don't seem to be getting mm -hmm. enough of the right sex education in schools? Right. And oftentimes even in their house because their parents don't know how to communicate sure. it. So, I mean, these are the two kind of big issues that we're wrestling with right yeah. now. What is the impact of porn on a relationship? Yeah. And what's the impact of porn on kids? Yeah. For kids, you know, we don't let kids learn to drive by watching Fast and Furious. And if we did, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be surprised if they all died in flaming car wrecks. Well, right. kids are learning about sex from porn, but they're yeah. doing so because we are promoting abstinence-only education uh -huh. and allowing education in the in schools about sexuality that is mm -hmm. not connected to the real world, that mm -hmm. is deeply shaming, that is medically inaccurate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's on us. Yeah. You know, it is gonna take our society 20 or 30 years to recover mm. from the damage that abstinence-only education has done. Uh, yeah, the yeah. negative impact that it has created on sexuality. Right. That's on us. Yeah. We have to address that and we have to fix it. Yeah. It's no surprise that kids are going to porn to learn about sex because it's easy. Yeah. But the danger is that porn makes sex look easy. Right. You know, you don't have to use lube. You know, it, it's, not, it's not that difficult to satisfy a woman. You just uh -huh. jump, jump on in. and pound There's away. Much Maybe play, bring some right? friends, right? <laughs> Maybe bring yeah. some friends and do it on a motorcycle. That's right, sure. The <laughs> vibration, I mean, the vibration of the engine. and uh, <laughs> Porn makes it look easy, yeah. and the reality is good sex takes negotiation, personal yeah. awareness, responsibility, Intimacy. integrity, right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Porn doesn't teach that, but we're not teaching it either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so and what do you do? that's the problem. Right. Well, so how can porn uh, positively impact relationships? When, when couples use porn, mm -hmm. you know, what does that look like? When couples, it, it, again, it's complicated, and, that, and that's yeah. kind of the, one of the challenges is that mm -hmm. people are individual, mm. couples and relationships are different, and every relationship and every person looks different. Mm. People want an easy answer. Porn right. is bad. It's right. an easy answer. Right. But the reality is, if a couple uses porn together, mm. chances are their relationship is healthier and they have better sex. Mm. Mm -hmm. if, if in a couple, the woman uses porn, mm. The couple is typically healthier and has better sex, mm. even if the husband doesn't know. Oh, I'm a big fan of porn, by the way. Yeah. But, <laughs> but in relationships, if the husband is using porn yeah. secretly, uh. oftentimes it is a negative effect on the relationship. I've definitely seen yeah. that to be the case. Yeah. Now, but in, you, these, we, in clients, and but stuff. it's easy to blame that on the porn. But it's uh. not about the porn because think about the relationship. It's about the lack right. of communication. That's right, and the lack of relation, lack of communication, and lack of acceptance. Right, because. Even in that relationship, the man can't talk to his wife about what kind of porn he likes, mm. what kind of kinky stuff he might like, or mm. the fact that he wishes she could relax in bed and enjoy mm. sex the way these actresses in mm. uh, in the videos do. Mm. Maybe she's intimidated because she thinks women who enjoy sex yeah. are sluts and bad, yeah. uh -huh. because that's the way she was taught. Women don't like sex. Right, right. 
And those are the conversations that in the modern world of sexuality we yeah. need to help people have. Porn is uh -huh. opening that door. Now we have to walk through it. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and it's interesting. I think a lot of the... Um, you know, a lot of the responses from women happen to be like, why are they more attracted or why are they more interested in porn? And it feels mm -hmm. like a personal thing, like it's a it's mm -hmm. a slight to their own sort of bodies or attractiveness. How would you help women sort of accept that, you know, their husband or boyfriend can can I know as a all. woman I always uh -huh. go like, Hey, what are you watching? Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, you're more I know, I know. You don't but take I'm it saying if I were to but... advise a woman I mean I <laughs> yeah. know as a professional you'll you might have something sure. different to say, but as a woman yeah. I would just be like, Hey, what are you watching? Oh, that's interesting, you know, and Let's I would watch it together. Exactly. Yeah. Or enjoy, the, let me know how it is. Right. <laughs> I think we have to give women the, the ability to be afraid because they've mm. been taught to be afraid. Uh, they've been taught to fear their man uh -huh. wanting something other than them. Because if, if their man wants something other than the wife, uh -huh. then it means the relationship is doomed. Uh -huh. That that relationship is not the one. Mm. I think that is some of the unfortunate programming mm -hmm. that is coming. And it's not about the Not porn. understanding right. desire. Um, right. Not and, understanding desire and diversity. Not yeah. understanding fantasy. Now we... We don't think it would be okay for the husband to say to his wife, I want to know what you masturbate to. I want to know what you fantasize about. And it's not okay for you to fantasize about somebody other than me. But it's right. okay for you to act like my dad. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like that, right? When, tell when me, couples start parenting each other, bad Heather, idea. Heather, uh, tell me more about your relationship with your father. Wow. How much time do we have? All right. <laughs> but that's what that always thinks when I yeah, see people getting exactly. like that. All it's these just do's like, and don'ts. And, yeah, 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 but unfortunately... Do we get a spanking? We, we are doing that with men because porn is just fantasy. And that, yeah. that's unfortunately the reality is mm. that porn is an external um, representation of our sexuality sexual fantasies, mm. our inside sexual mm. fantasies. Mm -hmm. And we're afraid of that because we're afraid of fantasy. We're afraid yeah. of what fantasy means. Mm. We're afraid of pleasure. Mm. And porn and masturbation are just about sexual pleasure. Right. Again, I think that the conversation we're invited to have right now about uh -huh. porn is, why are we afraid of fantasy? What does yeah. fantasy really mean? Right. And is sex for pleasure okay? Right, right. It's so funny, when you're talking about fantasy, my head is like going off to Disney and I'm thinking to myself, it's okay to like perpetuate the story of a woman being disempowered, she'll be saved by a man one mm -hmm. day. Um, you know, because she's mm -hmm. like, right. that fantasy is okay to perpetuate, that someone right. will come and rescue mm -hmm. this poor yeah. damsel in distress, right. but porn is a fantasy not okay. Right, <laughs> right. Which and fantasies the, are okay yeah, and which And that it's romantic when the beast pounds on the door of beauty and, and bell and bust in. <laughs> yeah. and she uh -huh. swoons and falls in love. Yeah. But the fact that women at two or three times the rate of men seek out rough sex porn. Mm, mm, Interesting. Mm -hmm. That women are idealizing that and uh, that's okay and it's part of the way that women are made, it's part of the way that women are programmed in mm, our in, in our world yeah. today. That rape porn and rape fantasy is not really about rape. Uh, yeah. It's about power, right? It's about a lot of things for a lot of different people. Yeah. And that we can understand that by talking with the people and by understanding mm. those things, mm -hmm. not by just blaming the porn. Right. Well, and I'm curious, have you found, a, a, have you noticed a difference between how porn is utilized with straight couples versus gay couples and lesbian couples? And because I never hear gay couples Isn't have that issues with porn. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, homosexual couples very rarely report yeah. problems with porn yeah. because porn use, masturbation uh -huh. are not shamed. Uh -huh. They're not stigmatized in the gay male couples. Right. You know, lots of lesbian couples mm -hmm. watch gay male porn. I hear that What's all the that time about? too. Right? Yeah. It would be really interesting yeah. to know. Now, we all have theories about what it's about, yeah. but nobody uh -huh. has ever really investigated that. I think it'd be fascinating yeah. to truly really explore. Yeah. But, you know, and I'll go back a minute you know we talked about you know erectile induced uh, porn induced erectile dysfunction mm. is only really being reported by heterosexual males uh, because in the gay male culture uh -huh. erectile dysfunction is just kind of accepted and not a big deal right <laughs> 
where um, heterosexual wait, men you need to be performing all the that's time. That's right. right. Because it makes it all it makes it all about that straight male penis. Right. Yeah. It's like you have to with, be hard, you know, right. exactly when you want, as long as you want, and it can never go limp. And if you it's learn like these expectations, it, that's right. Porn, and if you right. learned about sex from porn, that's what you think. Yeah. And then when then when you get with a woman, as mm. opposed to mm. masturbating, where you can relax mm. mm-hmm. and be passive and mm-hmm. just let the porn stimulate you mm. but when you're with a partner and you have to be mm. mindful and aware and mm. negotiate and pay right. attention to them uh-huh. all of a sudden it can be difficult to get an erection because you get right. a little anxious and then there can be that performance anxiety that's like, right am i going to be able to please and that's right you know and maintain and sustain and all that you but know it's, it's easier to blame it on the porn it's yeah. interesting when you're talking about performance anxiety as it relates to porn because i always find that there's that awkward moment where you know, like you were saying, some women are into, a lot of women, or you said, are into rape porn or mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, I know that there's a lot of shame about sharing stuff that would seem to be mm-hmm. awkward. Like, I've definitely had my weird porn watching. Now, I've watched all different types of porn just out of sheer curiosity to see what people are doing and what's going on. But there's definitely been moments where if a man sits there and says, well, what kind of porn are you into? And it's like, I don't know if I want to share that with right. you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Kind of personal. Nin- it is personal, and I feel like it's of, my fantasy. Like I don't, yeah. like I don't want you to have them. Ninety <laughs> percent of people never share their sexual fantasy uh, with their husband, wife, or even their therapist, uh, because we are all deeply afraid of what other people will think about our fantasy. Because right. we think our fantasies mean something. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. But we really don't know if they do. That's right. one of the deep, dark secrets of mental health and therapy uh-huh. and, and psychiatry. Interesting. Is yeah. that we used to think that people's sexual fantasies meant something about yeah. who they were as a person. Thanks yeah. to Freud, and, I bet, right? He did a lot of yeah. work on that. And uh, um, what's his young? Young. Yeah. And <laughs> now we sort of realize, well... There are lots and lots of people out there who have some deeply wild fantasies, mm. and we don't really know how they ended up with that, and we don't know if it means anything about right. who they are as yeah. as a psychologist, as a YouTuber, uh-huh. as a president. All right, yeah. right. Hello. <laughs> well, and it's fascinating. Um, yeah, these kind of erotic themes, like why do certain fetishes or fantasies, right. or you know, vanilla to kink to BDSM. What is it about our childhood experiences that helps to form that? Mm-hmm. You know, what's what's that one fantasy that just gets you off every That's single right. time? Those kinds of things. How right? do we just happen on that one fantasy? Yeah. And, you know, th- there's a researcher friend of mine who's a neurologist, and he argues mm. that there's something about the biology, mm. e- each person's individual biology, and that, yeah. that they run into that one stimulus, that one mm. fantasy that makes it easier for them to orgasm. Right. And that's how a fetish is born. Interesting. Uh, um, yeah. Interesting theory but we don't know unfortunately that's why it's called a theory that's right (laughs) unfortunately in the absence of information we can't jump to pathologize Mm -hmm. and so when we see people with these scary fantasies we can't jump to the conclusion that Mm. it means something right right Wow, thank you so much David it's really great information really appreciate being here how do people find you. you Twitter is the easiest way, yeah. at Dr. David Lay. It's L-E-Y. And yeah. uh, my new book is is out uh, this fall. Great. Ethical Porn for Dicks. Ethical Porn for Dicks. And, uh, yes, I've seen your tweets. I've shared a lot of your tweets. They're great. Thank you. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and thank you for joining us on the James and Heather Show. I'm Heather Dawn. And I'm James Gay. If you want to hear our radio episode of this same topic, you can go to our website. It's thejamesandheathershow.com. Yep, and you can find our radio show and all our information on there. Thank you very much, and send us some questions. Thanks for having me.